Ladies and gentlemen, this is week three of my environment painting class, and today I'll be doing a demo for you based on the topic Robot Graveyard from the Super Speed Painting Forum on Facebook. So this will run for about 50 minutes, and I'll I'll walk you through the whole the whole stage. I got my four awesome students on the line with me, which you still can't hear. Uh, if they have any questions, I'll relay them to you. And otherwise, in general, we'll just be talking about the painting and how I approach things. So here we are. We're now I'm now in, in this corner. Let's see, so now you should be able to see my layers as well, which is cool. Um, so the only thing I've done is I've prepped, uh, I prepped some ref. We got a ton of cool ref ready to go, and and that's that's basically it. Uh, haven't done a lot of research in this, haven't really done my homework. Usually I spend a little bit more time on this. I spend uh, 10 to 20 minutes looking at reference, maybe looking at some other inspirational images, kind of get the feel of the topic that I'm doing, kind of let the idea form in my head, you know, time of day, what kind of uh, setting do I want to go for, which I haven't really done for this one. Um, so fingers crossed this will actually turn into something uh, mildly acceptable. All right, so here we go. This is, uh, this is the image I chose for my kind of my base plate. I I, I tend to choose my base plate based on uh, the horizon. That's mostly it. Maybe some colors in there. Like colors would be nice, but mostly it's the horizon and uh, a little bit of texture. And I'll try always to use folders just to make it a little bit more easy for me to see what I'm see what I'm doing. So as I was looking at these references, I had like a little idea of kind of where I wanted to take the painting, like some stuff that I thought would be uh, cool. So that's the order in which I'm trying to uh, go through here. I'm trying to see if I can work as much ideas in as quickly as possible, mostly just to test the water and to get uh, any form of uh, composition going. So let's see, I don't want, actually I don't want any of the water, I just thought that the pier here had a nice, um, had a nice texture to it, that's usually the case with these uh, industrial zones, they get really cool textures. So when I thought robot graveyard, I was thinking, okay, so something industrial would actually be very cool, with a little bit more of that rough feel, so I was looking up tons of ref for uh, docks and shipyards. Um, and kind of took it from there. So you get these these cool things like these big containers as well. So I, I imagine this this robo robot graveyard is kind of like a a scrapyard for me. I think the like the personal interpretation of what's going on is uh, is quite important. You know, kind of give your own spin to the story. Um, like when I when I do concepts, I, I try to stick very close to the brief. But I found that for these speed banks, it's actually kind of nice to. Uh, just do an approximation, you know, kind of not take it too too serious. So just see, kind of, kind of bash that in. So I'm closing, I'm closing off the painting quite quickly now, which is not, not exactly where I wanted to, uh, wanted to take this. I want to have this nice corridor, which you can see stuff in. So. Maybe you can have like a two stack high container. Could be a cool thing. Actually, just need that face for that. Don't need the other one. Um, and actually, well, I usually wait quite a long while before I start thinking about um, putting any form of sky in because the sky is actually the main thing which determines uh, the mood in my paintings. All the rest of the stuff, this. Strange enough, is actually more set dressing for me, um, and I know many people who work the other way around, where the where the sky is much more of a set dressing. But I don't know. I I really tend to focus on the on the sky and have that nice dramatic feel going on quite quickly. So, so with these skies, I have a little bit more of an idea where I wanna where I wanna go because I've done most of these skies. Uh, oh, actually, that was the wrong. 
covered the whole canvas there. <laughs> uh, with these guys, I have, I have um, a little bit more practice, so it's a bit easier for me to, to work out ideas what I want. So let's see if it, that happens this time. If we can kind of make it make it gel. So something like that, but probably a little bit more. Probably a little bit more dramatic. So yeah, see, this is this is a little bit better already. And when I start adding these things, I usually flick through the uh, the blending options this, just to see if there's something a little bit unexpected, happy accents that we can get. You know, maybe pushing in that direction. So. Um, add another sky image lined up to so see what that gives us. Completely different feel. That's okay, we can just kind of try it out and see what happens. It's not really the feel I want to go for. I want to go for a very like overcast kind of sky, but maybe having a a highlight in that overcast sky could be could be cool. Let's see if we can just paint that in. Uh, actually, trying to get my timer to work now. Oh, there it is. Okay, no, it's running. It's running. Uh, still getting used to that. So that's definitely not working out the way I wanted to. Um, so we'll get back to that later. I don't want to have that eat up too much time right now. Um, so the riff is, is not organized in any way. So I'm just you'll see me do this a lot, just kind of flicking through, seeing what would be cool. Actually, uh, I might just want to use that sky. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a quick way of. Uh, of highlighting. So now we get like this highlight in the sun, which is cool. So I can kind of leave that in the background, leave that in the back of my mind, going like, okay, this is maybe I want this uh, this highlight to be there. And now I'm I'm gonna work on the uh, Kind of on the background, background noise. You just need any kind of detail, really, just to be like a placeholder for how busy you want things to get. So it doesn't doesn't have to match exactly with what you want to do. Actually, that highlights getting annoying already. <laughs> so let's get rid of that. Let's get some placeholder details just in there. This also kind of helps for for scale, so I can kind of see where my scale is at. So I think this building is already too big. If I want this in, I might have to maybe push it to the foreground or compress it a little bit and then make this one a lot bigger. So you got this more like natural relationship between the two buildings going on. Um, and I'll just cut this. Actually, don't need any of this. I just need the this face right here. Desaturate that a bit. Um, so all these parts are really cool. All these flavor parts, but. Not really ready for the flavor parts yet, because we're still very much looking at how we're establishing the scene. So I try to look at the background and kind of work my way to the foreground, unless there's something really interesting that I want in there uh, straight away. So I kind of want this building in the background. 
Oh, uh, <laughs> what a joy, actually. Uh, let's see if we can, hopefully we can kind of color range this. That would be ideal. I don't need to retain a lot from this building anyway. I can, I can kind of dump some details here and there. So I'm doing it like this will actually already be fine. It's kind of like super rough, but that's okay. It's going to get even worse because I'm going to grow the um, selection a little bit so we cut out the, uh, the blue edges that we get from the sky. Let's see what we're left with. Yeah, it's kind of, that's kind of messy. That's okay. We kind of get the gist of it anyway. Park you over there. So this building just, just will just be a nice composition element, and we're thinking robotics, so we're trying to reinforce that whole um, modern, modern kind of feel, you know, uh, with with robots. So I was thinking heavy industrialism. So I just looked for some. Some buildings that look like busy industry again, looking at ref from from harbors and stuff like that. So this is another cool building with a helipad on top. So let's see, cutting cutting it out, cutting it up. Um, I'm gonna do this with color range as well. Color range is a nice, fast tool. It's, it's a little rough. You might not get the results that you want straight away. A little bit of tweaking, but that's cool. I should really make a macro for that kind of stuff. I've been I've been really kind of super lazy with all the stuff that I want to macro and sh you know short key or hot key I should say. So. Yeah, this is nice. So we're not we're getting this kind of cool feel already. You know, it starts to feel nice, nice and busy, which is exactly what we want. By reappropriating a ton of ref multiple times, we can um, uh, we can actually get the feeling of consistency. And if you do it, if you do it well, if you do it a bit clever, like hide the obvious stuff like that little crate thing that we have in front of there so if you hide that uh, we give it a different color you usually do color balance but since this is just one color I just figure I use hue and saturation so we go complementary color maybe a little desaturated actually and I should definitely hotkey this as well I'm checking our composition on the fly. Usually, I measure measure my compositions, and the whole thing is this almost painstakingly, like super meticulous process where I go completely ape shit with uh, with guidelines and measuring tools and you know what have you. Um, when I do these speed paints, I try to keep it a little bit more loose, mostly because I just don't have the time. I don't have the time, and I kind of trust that. Um, because of the nature, the way the way it's built up, we can. Uh, we can kind of get it right. So having this light beam right behind this thing, I think would be really cool. Let me move move these two guys so they're a little bit. Create some nice clipping, and then we'll start adding in damn shadows. That's the next super early step. So that will get a nice fat shadow. Uh, Merge these two. I try to do as much of my shadowing with these uh, hue and saturation layers because that will give me the most flexibility. If I start doing this with a uh, um, multiply layer already, I start painting a little bit too soon and I get a little bit too much into oh how does this AO work and you know how, how does how does that work and instead of just doing really quick. Uh, rough strokes, you know, kind of the. I'm just looking for the broad strokes right now. Not really too fussed about anything else. So these values are kind of just kind of all over the place. And, uh, same for the colors, but 
We'll get to that. Uh, a lot of detail taken out, a lot of saturation taken out. Um, I'm doing it like this. The reason why I'm not pushing it already with the U and saturation is just because I have this now this extra layer of control that I can build in. So the levels will always control the amount of dark I can have in there. So that's my atmospheric push. Uh, and then with the hue, I can kind of tweak how much like leeway and tolerance I have within that, which is cool. Start blending. I'm mean, like very kind of. Very carefully now, I'll start blending and uh, blending and stuff. You know, kind of get a feel for what my dominant color is going to be. Like I keep it blue uh, at the moment, but I think actually we might end up with a lot more orange and red in here. Actually, let's not do that yet. Actually, no, let's. Because this is not giving me quite the result that I want. Just push this back just a little bit. Let's give this a nice fake shadow for the sake of interest. So this would be catching a lot more sunlight because it's almost in direct sunlight, but I think it's a little cooler if we just don't do that. So this is kind of the thing where you go, okay, I know this is how this is supposed to work and uh, where my sunlight's coming from and all that, and then you know, full on ignoring it for the sake of a slightly more interesting image. I'm not saying you should do this all the time. Realistic, just full-on realistic lighting is usually the way to go. Uh, but you can kind of get away with some stuff every now and again. So it's kind of going okay. We need to start adding some weird shapes in here soon. Let's see. So that's for uh, after this. I kind of want one of these quirky, quirky vehicles in there. I think these are cool. So let's see if we can make that work. Again with the super rough selection because we're not actually too worried about how refined all this stuff is looking. I don't. I usually spend a lot more time making nice selections and polishing it and then kind of correcting the stuff that was uh, too time consuming with paint but um, with these I, I try to paint a whole lot more so actually I don't like the top half of this cabin useless to me so I just cut that off truncate it just to get a little bit more of the the weird shapes in the opportunity for weird shapes anyway Mm 
a little bit more volume in here by adding some some shadows. Actually, I want a background building as well. So, um, this will just pure be some background noise. I'll take some of the detail out because I don't want the detail in this back background building to be to be high or noticeable. Actually, I just almost wanted to be a silhouette. I don't really care about the detail. I just want to block off that tiny bit of um, horizon. Again, just the, the kind of the busier it feels, um, oops, uh, the better it is. We don't leave uh, the eye like hanging in one in one spot for too long. Actually, I'm going to put a uh, surface blur on here. As a cheap way to kind of knock it back. I hope I didn't overdo it. I, I didn't actually check the preview. Oh, let's give this a second. Eh, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We can keep going. So now I can actually start painting in some composition elements that I kind of want to have. I think it's cool if we get like a nice big sign in here that blocks off some of that sky. Um, actually, let's put in the highlight for this building. There it is. Have my selection up still. So that's cool. That bit back there actually needs to be desaturated quite a bit. Keep that. Get rid of that. We'll get rid of the the puddle and reflection later on anyway. Not really too worried about that just yet. So let's do the same with this one. Let's pick out some of the highlights that it would be getting. Nothing on that side. A lot on that side. Maybe that sphere as well. So the shapes are a bit easier to read for us. So a lot in this is just about pure readability. How well does something read? Stuff like those highlights help a lot actually, but this mask is way too messy. Yeah, we definitely need some more kind of stuff going on. Now I don't want to make these too complex. The reason why some of these images work so well is because they're so simple. There's not a whole lot of stuff going on in them. And a lot of the, the detail is actually just uh, suggested in there, not really painted out. So that's kind of what kind of what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that feel and where you go like okay yeah I I understand what's going on without me actually having to paint all of it because that would just take take way too much time. You can't you can't really get that in 50 minutes. You're just trying to suggest some cool stuff. And let the viewer do do most of the work. Um, and I think this is one of the one of the trademarks things of a concept artist as well. Is when you're working, you might not always have the time to do um, the full concept or. Uh, get your ideas across in the way you want, so you have to be a lot more clever about it. So I think, you know, if this this little house which they're in might have this big crane attached to it. 
see if we can get like a nice composition element out of this in one. Um, I think I did that in my previous video with a branch. I'm not sure if I even recorded that. Don't think, don't think I did, did I? No, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure I didn't. Um, but I, yeah, I was talking about that as well. That playing around with these compositional elements is actually uh, quite important. Let's see what color can we give this? I'm thinking just very desaturated again. Just give it a little bit of a highlight. So we're going to do a lot of these sort of sort of shadows where we uh, kind of imply maybe clouds moving overhead, which are casting some sort of shadow on it. So not everything is in this full highlight. Yeah, these colors are starting to clash a little bit too much. Oh, great. Uh, didn't do that. I didn't do that very clever. Try to keep your color and uh, uh, brightness and shadow stuff separated. That that does help. Let's turn this off for now. So that's cool. So I'm thinking, yeah, this robot arm would would pick stuff up, and then maybe there's this. Like wall right here. Might be a bit cheesy or cheeky even um, to put a wall here where we actually block the main part of the thing off. But I think again the power of suggestion would help a lot. You know, you're this robot owning guy. You drive up to this place and um, you just kind of hand your your robot to this machine and you know, puts it over the fence. And there's this guy with his little shop. Pay him some money and he'll get rid of it. So, whoops. We are quite a bit slower than we are normally. But that's okay. And that, that shadow is just all wrong. <laughs> just all wrong. Let's run with it for now. Uh, contact shadow. And there we are. I'm still not sure about this. About this crane. This placement. It's mostly because things aren't really blended in um, properly enough at the minute, so it's kind of it's kind of hard to see where I want to take this. You know, it's a little bit a little bit too too busy. Uh, let's see. So I need some noise on the foreground of this wall. I need to start defining my wall in itself. So all these cool machines. It's all, it's all nice, but we're actually, we might actually not really use them. Mm. Got all these cool robotics. Well, that's a nice image as well, but I think my background is, my background is pretty much sorted. It's all done. So ah, see now this is cool. This is a cool bit of. So if we just, if you make this wall, not just a regular wall, but again, if we kind of theme it to where we want to be, that would actually help us. Kind of, sort of, kind of like this. We 
we might actually lose too much details if we put it on soft white. So I might revert back to its original color. Um, I'm always keeping this composition in mind, you know, seeing if there's not a better way I can uh, distribute things to let the whole thing breathe a bit more or less. You know, we can either go for a quite open feel, but I think like when moving this around, I see it quite, quite claustrophobic. I think that's actually pretty cool. We just get an issue with with the crane. So I think the tangent that we have between the building and the crane is actually quite, uh, quite interesting. I'm just not really sure on how how much we need it um, to breathe on its own. You know, so the crane is actually the the smaller thing here. Maybe if we break that tangent all the way. Yes, no, maybe. We just want some cool repeating shapes, actually. That's, that's pretty much it. And the fact that the perspective is, is off is bugging me a little bit at, at the moment. But it's okay. So let's just super quickly extend the shape. Backward. There it is. This part of, where did this guy come from? So that's cool. We can do our color correction pass now. Oh, I hate that, that it does that on the Cintiq. I click the button and automatically it just pops like, oh, select a color? No. It's not what I wanted. So here we can just kind of, oh, there it is again. Rage. So we're going to go quite extreme because the white, the full white is the whitest that we can obviously have it. So to simulate that super bright, we have to go quite oh wonderful. I'm so I'm so super smooth in everything I do today. Great. Um, but yeah, we have to go. We have to go quite dark and everything else. You know, just just so we have the the lighter areas that pop a little bit more. So I thought my music just kind of like a maniac right now, but it's because my hangout just crashed. So. Let me just call my students again. And there we are again. Brilliant. I just thought, wow, my music is freaking out. That happens when I crash. And again. So we're going to get this a lot. So I might go a little bit over that 50 minute uh, mark because of all this. I get to listen to some music in the meantime. It's cool. You can't hear it, but it's it's good music. Oh yeah, guys! See how often we get to do this. A lot, I bet. I'm I'm betting a lot. Again, more music. Mm. Oh. So, um, I will just not start my screen share for you guys for a minute. Um, 
lest I get too much out of my flow of this painting. Um, but you can all watch it on the stream, yes. Everyone just watch it on the stream, catch that stream. Um, I just, I don't know, it's just, it's just, it's hang out, freaking out, it's just, but the cool thing is, it just seems to be me who's, you know, who, who has that issue. Uh, so I feel reasonably privileged on having, you know, shit plugins, uh, or whatever the deal is, I'll, you know, I'm trying to fix it, but the, the problem is I have no idea what the problem is. I have no idea where all of this is going wrong. Um, so the browser I'm using for all of this stuff is Chrome. Whoa! I just saw my camera got like crazy blurred. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I'm using I'm using Chrome for this. Um, uh, but yeah, I've already I've already checked all the stuff. Like, is Chrome an issue? Where could the issue be? Does not seem to be be that. So I'm just knocking some of these buildings back a little bit. So I'm creating this this full highlight um, at the moment. A lot more focused light right now. And just balancing the image right real quick is, is quite important. Ah, oof, I just destroyed my colors big time. Not cool. So I take them out with the hue and saturation layer, and then I kind of paint them back in in places. But I feel that I've done way too much with the soft brush, so it's all it's all slowly going to hell. <laughs> Uh, which is not good. Um, I actually should get a lot more in the habit of using a much harder round brush for some of this stuff. Uh, just because it, it gives a little bit nicer a little bit nicer effect. The, the soft brush creates uh, the, the edges that the soft brush obviously creates aren't, aren't very nice. So I'm trying to use a more hard round brush and then a smudge tool kind of get the same effect but the problem is it takes a bit longer and not not as as skilled with it yet so meanwhile this painting is not really going into the direction I was hoping it was going and I'll try my screen share again so you know fingers crossed while I get this stuff going screen share See, should be good. Crashing again. No, I think we're good. Sort of, anyway. Sort of, sort of good, I guess. Um, no, not select of color. Color balance. I feel like it should really know what I want by now. You know, kind of like a favor to me. I'm like, come on, Photoshop. Come on, guy. Okay, maybe I should do this with the soft brush. Just, just, just use the soft brush one more time. Just one more time, guys. I think, I think, it, I think I might have gone a little bit too orange. So when, when you have the whole thing. You don't notice it as much, but actually, let me just yeah, like dial it back a little bit like that. I'm still on the fence about the crane, and I'm still on the fence about the foreground. I think there's not really enough 
uh, enough going on. So let's see if I can just slap some stuff in there to make it interesting again. So let's, you know, let's just let's just reuse these cool debris textures. I guess at the minute it's, it's much more evolving into a uh, actual scrapyard than a robot scrapyard, but uh, that's just this is one of those cases again where I go like, this, guys, this is not going as I planned. But let's just run with it. Let's just make sure we get like an image done, and then we can work into it later on. Change it later on. At least the idea, our starting point was was robot graveyard so far. A whole ref stage. That's you know, it's kind of what we would have been looking at. So one of my students said, "Can't you put a sign in there with dangerous robots uh, or dangerous robot parts?" And yeah, no, that'd be that'd, that'd be a perfectly valid, perfectly valid solution. You could do that. Um, I want to have my vendor guy, which is not really a vendor guy at all. This is weirdly def undefined shack, which you don't actually have a clue what it is, because you can't see it. Um, that's kind of where I want my my sign to be, and this sign that I had on top here. Oh, actually, this is this is great. What am I thinking? These are brilliant. What are of these big big door kind of things? These are brilliant for a little bit of noise and ramps. You know, you can kind of block off big areas with this stuff. Actually, this might be some sort of uh, tread path kind of thing. So, so everything else is kind of noisy and. and this thing would be in here to kind of denoise it for us. Although that will get all the full full details, and you can have your perspective reinforced by these things. You know, you just oh, the perspective is a little bit vague. Okay, just put a road in. As soon as you put a road in, people can exactly see how the perspective is supposed to go. Uh, because that clips with the little gate that we have, we automatically assume that it's uh, going up, which is the initial idea, but let's just flatten things out. That's okay, and then kind of roughly roughly take that out. We've got originally about 10 more minutes on this one, which is probably not going to be enough. So every time I edit stuff, I turn my color correction layer off again. Whoa, that was all me. That was twice all me. Uh, I turn it off so it's just a little bit easier to see what it is that I'm doing again, you know, so I don't get too confused. And also because I might want to color correct individual parts, and if your color correction is on, you might get that completely wrong. So I think this again, this yellow. I'm not. No. This yellow. I think. I think because I did way too much with the soft brush, the whole thing is just becoming too fuzzy. So let me just go in there with a round brush to see if I can kind of amend some stuff. It'll be. It'll be super rough. And usually, I like to focus a lot more on on the lighting in here. Um, but yeah, let's see here. I guess not. It's, I mean, it's kind of it's kind of okay. We kind of get the feel, or I kind of get the feel, which which I want it. Kind of getting there, so let's see. Let's see if we can get some of these mega highlights in even more. So 
start making more sense of these shapes that we have. And you see me do it a lot. It's not a super efficient way of working where you put in a highlight and you take it out with a different correction layer and then putting it back in again, but it does give a really nice kind of painterly effect because that's exactly what you're doing. You keep painting over all your mistakes and trying to get some stuff back in. And normally, again, if I had more time left on the speed paint, I would do this all with the selection tool. Um, maybe I'll sell these metal parts on this door. Get a nice amount of contrasts. on some little details in here and on top of here oh I get like really close to the camera again yeah sorry guys the the camera for those watching the video is right on top of my Cintiq and when I when I lean in to do stuff as my students already know I get I get really creepy and intimate um, so that is way too much let's dial that down maybe just have a little cloud break kind of thing going on. And that's it. Maybe not even that. Soft brush some of this stuff. Oh god, my edge control and this is just terrible. Just rushing through these color correction layers has completely destroyed that. So let me just paint some of that stuff. And you really want to make sure that the edges that you're using are nice nice and crisp. And that's that's what I was talking about before with the soft brush. That absolutely kills it. And it's easy to work with because you feel like it blends in, but when you take a step back and you look at it and you're like, oh shit. I lost all readability in this because it's just not nice, nice and crisp anymore. So we got some stuff in here now. Like a sign. Some cables, maybe a uh, Another sign, you know, maybe uh, use some spray paints. Uh, like we by now we go to a much darker shade. Maybe you kind of get the idea, like okay, maybe they buy robot parts. Uh, Get rid of some of the detail here in the on the left because it's just a little bit too much noise, which we don't need. So we can kind of get rid of it. And right here, left mid, we don't have enough detail actually, so we can just maybe suggest some detail. Maybe there's a a wench attached to it, so. That would have been a nice shot if we could have got that kind of stuff in. And some wires coming up. Even though it's a hydraulic kind of thing. It's a concept piece, so we we will always have wires. A little quick cast channel thing, so we push the sign back. Yeah, rough brush, which I haven't put in my favorites yet, but I really, I really enjoy this brush. Gives some super nice results. So one thing we haven't really thought about is adding lights in the distance, which could always be a cool thing. It just makes the scene kind of come to life, you know. So let's see if we can add like a window here, which has some lights. Uh, put that on a linear dodge layer, and then grab that. Grab a nice warm illumination color like here. A 
you paint in that that light. Maybe some lights back here. Well, I feel like big industrial kind of like lights. Not very pretty, but again, kind of erasing into it and the painting over it again might give a cool, cool feeling, cool kind of painterly feeling. Keep that contrast high so the the lights really, the lights really pop out. Uh, I f I really wanted something in the foreground here, maybe like a big, big plate of some some sorts to kind of break up how monotonous it is is getting down here. Oh, we. We sort of get that now, I guess. Just adding in some of that noise from before. A few visual guides, maybe another few plates just dumped against here. So you know this this track that we just made is kind of cool because I'm I'm painting around it, so you get the feeling that this is actually the the place where the trucks drive up to, you know. They drive up to that to that crane. Or at least that that's that's like the idea. Even though you can't really always convey all your ideas. If if it's sort of reasonable or feasible, you get like, okay, if I tell people this, maybe they'll get it. Obviously in a real concert it has to read like straight away. Um, let's grab a nice saturated color. And call this Jeb's Robots. Something like that. Just like you know was suggested in the in the chat. Actually it's nice we're kind of picking up a little bit of steam here towards the end. So I'm gonna let this I'm not actually sure. I forgot to put on my timer and I think it was four minutes in, so that would mean that. I think we'd be hitting the 50 minute mark right about now ish. But I feel that I haven't really paid too much attention. And it's a little bit tricky because I'm not used, to, I'm not, honesty time, I'm not really used to, you know, talking about what I do and painting at the same time. Wish I was. So I'm just going to run a little bit. I'm going to be cheating. I'll just run a little bit late. A little bit over because there's a few things that I'd love to get in here still, like some uh, some smoke. Smoke. It's cool. We're gonna do like a tiny bit of foreground smoke, like that, and we're gonna have a background, more integration smoke coming from behind this pile, sort of, sort of behind this pile. So if there are any questions from my class, I'll take them now and I can answer them still on this video. And otherwise, again, for you who are watching this on YouTube, if you have any questions about what I do, just uh, post a question in the comments or ask me on Facebook. And I'll, I'll try to answer it as best as I can. So I don't think I don't think I'm actually using any super crazy fancy never seen before techniques. This is all it's all really straightforward stuff. What we're doing. So let's see. Kind of bums me out that I didn't do any design on the crane. So maybe I'll I'll do that now. So I was thinking that it might be cool if you have like this double crane. So it almost feels like uh, it could be this arm picking it up. You know. I always get a little bit like antsy when I haven't <laughs> when I'm doing one of these concept pieces and I haven't done like a single bit of uh, actual like mechanical design on it. You don't always get to do it. Sometimes you're just actually just designing the mood and the atmosphere. But I think I think it's always cool just to have a little bit, even though it's super simple and maybe kind of shit. Even you know <laughs> you're showing. Oh look, I'm trying to. 
trying to get some some design going on here. Like this edge would be terrible. Ooh, it's just in general. It's not a nice nice angle. What, what kind of angle do I actually want on this? Kind of got a wrench, the wrench thing going on now. That's fine actually. You know what? Moving on, moving on to different things. Signage and uh, posters and anything like that is is good because it kind of makes the scene feel a lot more human. You know, it makes it come to life. Floating paper is always a good one. Even even if in, even in this weird weird dystopian future where there might actually not be any paper because all the trees are gone, I think you can still have like flyers on the floor and shit. You know, you'll always see that anyway. There's so many concepts where you go like, where where does this paper even come from? Who is leaving all this paper? On the floor. <laughs> Just get the comment that some blue flames are. Yes, yes, I'm missing. I'm definitely missing blue flames. Maybe, maybe that's something I should work on. Trying to get a little bit less, less dependent on the power of blue flames. <laughs> Even though they're crazy fun to do. I'm just saying. You know what? Just add just add another like tiny little sign here. Why not? The sign the signs are not just because I want to have so much info that I want to get across to people. It's more that they have a very nice way of breaking the whole thing up. Um, and I'm running now. Four minutes past my my, my timer just went beep. So I guess uh, I guess I'll be just wrapping this up now. Anyway. Man, it is it is tricky. It is tricky to talk and do all the cool things. You forgot what I was making the selection for. Um, but it's okay. It's about the it's about the journey. It's about the experience. You know, and all that. All in all, I'm 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 reasonably happy with the result that we we got from this from this exercise. Sorry, what was that? <laughs> yes, scoring them likes. Hmm. I'll go to my super secret trade in likes for money place. Get that dollar. <laughs> yeah, the Facebook likes, that's that's a strange topic right there. That is a strange topic. Whether it's good, bad, it's ruining the community or helping the community, all Facebook groups. I don't know. I for one think it's amazing that we can all just get together and have thousands of people looking at concept artwork and talking about concept artwork. It's it's great to see that whole industry kind of coming to life in that way. I remember just a few years ago there was none of that. Just that whole that whole scene was just completely different and everyone was super closed minded about what they did and no one wanted to share and everything just became this Super dramatic, super dramatic thing, and that's not, that's not cool. I mean, we're all here just to learn, you know, make make cool images. Oh my God, I haven't done this in forever. What's gonna happen here? Uh, no, I don't like that at all. <laughs> just ignore, ignore that. It's just, it's, let's just ignore it. Okay, so. We got we got less atmosphere in here than I hoped. We're missing out on some on some key elements. We got some we got some nice design elements done, which is good. I'll do a quick final kind of uh, viewer check and then a quick color check.
So I think cutting some stuff off from the bottom. We'll make this a better image. Yeah. Yeah. One more kind of trick. Um, That very rarely gives cool results, but you never know. A little bit of that light cast. You know, like that. Ugh. Okay. Okay. Okay, should should have stopped working on this. Actually, uh, what I haven't checked. Yeah, that helps. A little bit more contrast. Okay, well, um, I'm gonna cut that off here. Again, for those watching in the stream, this image will be, uh, I think, pretty much everywhere, at least for a while. Um, and I will post the link in the description where it's uploaded, so you can have a look in full res. Um, yeah, and, and that was it, really. Again, if you have any questions, just post them in the comments. Um, and I'll go back to my class now. Wrap it up with them. If you're interested in taking the class, send a message on Facebook. I think that's that's still the easiest thing. There's a there's a list, there's a whole system. I'll look you up. It'll be great. Thank you guys for watching and uh, see you next time.